on with now Gardner Kathy's going to talk about and provide some information on this Canada thistle, Cirrusium arvense, and the bull thistle, Cirrusium vulgar, which are kind of invasive. So there you are. Gardner they're more than, yeah, they're more than kind of invasive. All right. So I, I put um, a comparison of the two here for you to take a look at. On the left hand side of the screen is the Canadian um, thistle, Cirrusium aversia. It's it's quite the thing to find out, but it shows you how it grows. It's sort of got like a lighter um, purple color. It's uh, rosette is a little different than the rosette. The rosette is how the leaves form out from the base uh, of the uh, bull thistle on the right. And you'll see uh, the difference in the flowerings themselves. And another comparison, if you take a look at how they're growing in the field there, you'll see how they're so bunched up with the Canadian thistle and the bull thistle is more um, discreet. Those arms go out, right? But the bull thistle is one you really don't want to connect up with. So we can go on to the next slide. All right. So these are some facts about the Canadian thistle. Uh, it produces by rhizomes and by seed. And what you're seeing over here on the right, this is from Purdue University, and they had done a... Um, a uh, growth section exposing the, the root structure, rhizome structure of the Canadian thistle. And this is what it does. It goes down six feet or more, all right? Uh, it, it is just a naughty little thing, all right? It's a uh, perennial. It, um, I don't know what my next things are, but uh, it's above crown patch, takes place when the flowers and the seeds develop. So you'll see it, this, and it just, spreads throughout, all right? It's very invasive. The seeds can be viable for 20 years. It doesn't make a difference. You might think you have those seeds gone and you've taken care of that patch, they'll pop right back up if conditions warrant. And the distinctive features, it is perennial. So perennial, we like perennials, right? They save us trouble, but things like this, we don't want that kind of trouble. And they do reproduce by the seeds that are long lasting and those rhizomes that you see in that picture. The other wonderful thing is they're found in colonies, all right? They love to live together and connect out. Um, the heads are small and closely clustered. You could see that in the uh, image to the right there. Uh, they also, um, bracts are large, sharp spines. You'll see, I believe I have an image of it later in there. Uh, the leaf spines are sharp and they're very effective for keeping other animals away. They are out there to survive. All right, and claim the earth. And here you can see those nasty spines on it. All right, it, it really is a vicious looking thing. Uh, difficult to control once it's on site. And one treatment or combination of it, it's just, it's almost like you can't get rid of it. It's like bamboo, all right? It, it's almost impossible to get rid of it. But there are some suggested ways that you can do it. Mechanical toll, you can till it. <laughs> I don't know how many of us have a tiller, but you can do it at intervals of um, seven to 28 days, up to four years. And then you can do it periodically to just keep it under control. Um, repeated mowing will, mow, excuse me, mowing does weaken the stems, but it won't prevent the seedlings coming up and uh, um, all the other things. It's just, it's just crazy. The cultural controls, uh, you can plant competitive uh, crops such as alfalfa and forage grasses. So this means you're out in a big field with this little guy, all right, trying to take care of it. The control group is the biological. It's Europa caduria, and we'll find with the other thistles, it's the same genus, all right? And this one is a gall fly larvae. And what it does is divert the energy from the root and the flower to produce the gall tissue. And in doing that, that reduces the flowering, which reduces eventually the seeds. It doesn't kill the plant, but it helps to prevent the spread of it. And for more information, this is a really good document. Um, just click on that link and go there. Uh, <laughs> and as far as herbicidal, uh, just go to your pest management guide uh, because that'll deal with what you can do uh, with chemicals, et cetera, to control it. And here's a lot of links. You can find all kinds of links on this little guy. So there's a CM of Ensa. All right. uh, it's everywhere. It's everybody's problem. Okay. Our next one is the bull thistle Cicium vulgaria. And this is just showing that it's a pretty little guy. All right. 
But you can see over on the right, it does like to uh, send those seed pods out just as quickly as it can, all right, to spread. This one, um, we'll take a look at it. But as we look at this, if you take a look at the rosette, that's the image on the top left there. That is the first, It's a. this is a biennial, and that's the first year you'll have this um, rosette. You won't have the uh, stem coming out of it. But the plant itself can grow three See it on the right hand side there. All those nasty thistles and the thistles just, you know, grow absolutely everywhere on this little guy. And then you see the flowers. And it is a pollinator. You can see the bee there. Um, they do like it. On the year two, it's the flowering stems start to come up, all right, and form those growths that you're seeing. Long, I can't emphasize the spines that are on it. And it's not only, uh, it's on the leaves and it's on the midrib tips of the lobes. You wanna be very careful when you're around that thistle. Uh, leaves are deeply lobed and hairy and coarse on top and fuzzy and woolly on the bottom. So I'm sure that's to attract different types of um, insects, all right, to it to help with its uh, pollination. Uh, the leaf base extend down into the stem. If, if you take a look at that uh, diagram or the image on the right, you can see that. And they form these spiny wings. If you look at the base of the stem there, you can see them uh, sprouting out from that long stem. <coughs> and the flower heads top on each one, uh, they're, I think they're very pretty. I wouldn't want them, but they're very pretty. Um, and they call them the gumdrop shape. Right. And the spines extend all around the base. So you see the little gum drop there and then all the spines. And this is how you can easily distinguish it from the uh, Canadian uh, thistle. <coughs> so next one. And it flowers June to September. So it takes up all of your summer. Control. Uh, mechanical control is... Um, get my hint here. <laughs> Hand pull and dispose of the flowering parts in the trash. The key with this one is to keep the flowers out of your way and absolutely wear those gloves that protect you everywhere. Mowing can be effective, but cut the flowers before you start to do that. Uh, be sure those flowers are not, that's not flowering and you've either cut the flowers off before you move. If you remove the stems from the site, plants are cut and pulled with the flowers and make sure they go in the trash, not in recycling. Biological control, again, we see euphora, only this time it's stellata. All right, another um, seed head gall fly. All right, and this one induces um, and feeds on the gall tissue in the developing um, thistle seed head and reduces that seed production up to 60% and significantly reduces the seed production for the thistle in the populations, all right, from, from multiple years. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a goodie. And then as far as controlling it, pest management guides your best source of resources for that. And uh, links, lots of links on this. And this is a really great close-up showing those spines. And it shows you the hairy part on the underside as well. And then the flower heads that come off of it. And then I have just a little plant trivia, all right, with it. All right, it's actually in the logo or the arms of the Scots, all right? And it's there because um, there was an invading Norse army and they sent out a sentinel to see what, where the Scots were. The poor guy had bare feet and as it was running through the field, he stepped on some of the thistles, screamed mightily and alerted the Scots to the presence of the Norse, right? And they believe it happened at the Battle of Larch, but no one's certain about it, but that's why they have it. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Kathy, that's crazy. Do we have any questions out there? No, no questions at this point. Can I, are you, um, you know, when you drive along I-81, you see thistles growing quite thickly along the highway. Do you know, is it the Canadian or the bull or do they care? I, I I would imagine it would be the Canadian, but I can't say I haven't driven down 81 in a long while. Um, but I would do it by height, if they're three to seven feet, it's probably the um, Bulgaria one. Okay. The Canadian one I think is more like five feet, but yeah. And it could be some of the other ones, it could be some of the native species that you see as well. Wow. 
That's amazing. I had no idea about all these thistles and how big they would get. Whoa, thank you so much, Kathy. I, wow, I've learned a lot today. Now we've got Gardner Effie, who's going to talk about some of the native Virginia thistles. To unmute myself. Okay. All right. So we've heard all the bad things about the invasive ones. So we'll <laughs> listen to a little bit about the um, native ones. So they are very important to uh, pollinators and to birds. Next slide. Okay, so the, the thistle is a misunderstood native because it is often confused with the invasive thistles. So the, the native ones are confused with the um, invasive ones. And they're also grouped together and all seen as weeds. But native thistles play a critical role in the ecosystem in which they are a part. Many butterflies, beetles, and some species of caterpillar larvae Birds such as hummingbirds and finches depend on the rich, plentiful nectar and nutritious seeds of the native thistles. And you can buy the thistle seeds for, um, for birds. And they are never aggressive and they don't spread rapidly. Next slide. And this is a list of the nine that are found in Virginia out of 62 that are found in North America. So it, some of them are really interesting that are found just in Texas or just in Florida, but we have nine here and we have three that are, well, there's more than three in Fairfax County, but um, three that are the most common. And those are the ones we're gonna look at. All right, so characteristics of native thistles, they have white pubescence on the underside of the leaves, unlike the invasives that have gray, hairy undersides of the leaves. So white for the native and gray for the invasive. They're monocarpic, meaning that they're, they flower once and then they die. So they could flower the first year or the second year, more commonly not the first year, or they could take up to eight years to flower. And once they flower, that plant dies and then the new seeds come. Uh, they're found in open fields, sparse woods, and they attract, as I said before, many birds and pollinators. So the first one we'll talk about is the pasture thistle. The pasture thistle is found from Maine to South Carolina. It lives one to two years, so a biennial, mostly. Has pink, purple, or white showy flowers, prickly stems and leaves, like the invasive, and found in lawns, meadows, pastures, woodlands, and sandy floodplains. They can be used in a naturalized area for birds and pollinators. And here's a picture of the pasture um, thistle. You can see the hairy stems and can't see too much of the hairs on the underside of the leaves, but a little bit. And then those thorns there on the end of the leaves, like the other ones, the flowers do. Just looking at pictures, the flowers are very confusing to try to tell apart. All right, next one, Virginia thistle. This one can get up to six feet tall, has small flowers, purple or pink, and again, spiny ends on the leaves, and it is found from New Jersey to Texas. And here's a picture of it, flowers a little bit smaller, leaves are a little bit smaller, but still those thorny, thorny, thorny leaves. So spiny leaves and hairy stems. And then we have the field thistle, grows three to 10 feet tall. So here we have a really tall one one to two foot spread, and that's as far as it will go. Pink flowers, pink or lavender, and rarely white. They do come in white, but it's rare. Biennial typically, but can live one to three years. And here's a picture of the field thistle. It has that one to two foot spread, and then the flower head is oval, but more rounded than uh, the others. And the next one. So using native thistles can provide for insects and birds. And I said, use them and you'll be glad you did. A lot, a lot of uh, people that I read about that had them in their gardens really were appreciating them. And it's said that they seed, but they don't 
they're not aggressive. They're easy to control, to pull out. So they don't form that big wide mat. Uh, they need loam or clay loam soil that is well-drained, dry to moist soil. So you can have dry or moist and still get your thistles to grow. Uh, full sun or partial shade and they need space. So it said that they like to have some area that for their short spread, they don't like to be crowded in. And meadow cottage and pollinator gardens. All right. And then these are the sources that I used. All right, so I might actually try some in my garden next year. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> wow, this has been very interesting. I had no idea there were so many kinds of thistles either, and they all look alike. <laughs> Except so for just the yellow the white, Look for the white and the gray undersides to know whether it's invasive or native. I'm pretty sure my neighbor has some in her yard and I may go look. Do deer, are they deterrents to deer? I did not read that, but I would imagine with those thorns that they would be deterrents to deer, but deer aren't supposed to eat hollies and the deer absolutely devour my hollies. So. <laughs> Prickles and all. <laughs> I did read that their parts are edible. Some parts are edible and that the, the seeds are used uh, for medicinal purposes and then just for their nutritional value. Well, thank you very much, Gardener Effie. 